Greetings, and bienvenue, mine crew. Thank you for returning to this broadcast. And welcome to new viewers joining us for the first time. If you like a video, then feel free to subscribe. I have a weird experience with what could be a Thunderbird, but really me and my co-workers aren't sure what it was. I was sent out to Cadillac to do some surveying of a forest that was infested with something that was killing the trees. Nothing to odd there, I've done it many times. Took out a new guy to get him some experience. Now, Cadillac isn't the most remote area, but it's still pretty rural and there is a shit ton of forested area. Anyways, all green text from here on out for formatting. Pull up to the area. No path so we have to park on the side of the road and walk it. The area is about half a mile into the woods. No problem, I walked longer. Start walking through brush, kind of cutting our way through. It's summertime, so it's not easy to get through. Get about halfway there, smell death. Probably a dead deer. Sure enough, it's a dead deer. But it wasn't on the ground. Fucking dead deer in a tree at least 20 feet up. No rope hanging from it, nothing. Literally impaled on the tree. Take a picture on the work phone, send it to the boss. Tells us it was probably some prick hunting out of season and to leave it. Doesn't explain how the fuck it could have been impaled on a tree branch 20 feet up but okay. Continue to the site. As we get closer we can obviously see there is something wrong with the trees. They're dying. Fast. As we get closer it gets worse. I've never seen anything like it. Finally reach our point. Fucking trees are decimated. There is at least a 50 feet circle of just dead trees. Think of it like a flying saucer or UFO landed type circle. The smell of death is horrid. As we expected from the smell, there are about 4 other dead deer. Other rotting animals that I couldn't really make out what they were. Feathers everywhere. Along the rim of the circle, the trees were dying. Called my boss, told us to come back to the truck and write a report. Asked if he wanted us to survey. Says no, and tells us to just get back to the truck and report what we saw. At this point the new guy and I are just kind of stunned. We have never seen anything like this before. Return to the truck, write a report. Not too interesting but our boss never told us what the fuck was going on, and to this day I've never seen anything remotely close to that. Got another strange one. One year working in forestry. I'm still new so I'm trying to get as much experience as possible. Go with my hire up to a site. Doing some surveying again. We're in an area that is almost totally unpopulated for at least 10 miles. So we don't expect anyone to be out here. Anyways, we take a really narrow road as close as we can to our site. Road ends, decide to walk it. The walk is about 2 miles. It's fall at this point, so the trees are all yellow and orange. Absolutely beautiful. Nothing but a sea of color, so I don't mind the long walk. Get about 100 feet away from our site. See a figure. A co-worker and I just stop and are kind of W.T. Fang. My co-worker doesn't look good. Pale and clammy. Like he just seen a ghost. I'm not really scared. It just looks like a man. Look at our map. Look up. Look at the map again. Motherfucker is literally on the exact pinpoint location we have marked on our map. To the T he was sitting down with his feet straight out. My co-worker ain't moving. Ask if we should confront him. No response. At this point I'm pretty weirded out. But not too scared. It's just a dude. Walk closer. Get within maybe a few yards of the dude. This dude is wearing dress pants and a shirt and tie. I think Mormon like clothes. White shirt, black dress pants, black tie. Hey, are you alright? No response. Are you lost? No response, no emotion on his face. About to head back to my coworker when the dude stands up real fucking quick. Emotions flood back to him. You can see it on his face. Looking around like he doesn't know where he is. Makes eye contact. Dude starts booking it. Like hauling ass. Run after him but can't find him at all. 
Co-worker snaps out of it. Both me and co-worker don't know what the fuck just happened. But we do the survey as quickly as possible and just nope the fuck out of there. I was thinking maybe it was a tweaker or something like that, but we were literally in the middle of nowhere. Also the dude was out of it when he was sitting there. Staring straight with zero emotion on his face. It was pretty fucking weird. A co-worker says that he never had any experience like that in his life. Got another strange one. One year working in forestry. I'm still new so I'm trying to get as much experience as possible. Go with my hire up to a site. Doing some surveying again. We're in an area that is almost totally unpopulated for at least 10 miles. So we don't expect anyone to be out here. Anyways, we take a really narrow road as close as we can to our site. Road ends, decide to walk it. The walk is about 2 miles. It's fall at this point, so the trees are all yellow and orange. Absolutely beautiful. Nothing but a sea of color, so I don't mind the long walk. Get about 100 feet away from our site. See a figure. A co-worker and I just stop and are kind of WT thing. My co-worker doesn't look good. Pale and clammy. Like he just seen a ghost. I'm not really scared. It just looks like a man. Look at our map. Look up. Look at the map again. Motherfucker is literally on the exact pinpoint location we have marked on our map. To the T he was sitting down with his feet straight out. My co-worker ain't moving. Ask if we should confront him. No response. At this point I'm pretty weirded out. But not too scared. It's just a dude. Walk closer. Get within maybe a few yards of the dude. This dude is wearing dress pants and a shirt and tie. I think Mormon like clothes. White shirt, black dress pants, black tie. Hey, are you alright? No response. Are you lost? No response, no emotion on his face. About to head back to my coworker when the dude stands up real fucking quick. Emotions flood back to him. You can see it on his face. Looking around like he doesn't know where he is. Makes eye contact. Dude starts booking it. Like hauling ass. Run after him but can't find him at all. Coworker snaps out of it. Both me and coworker don't know what the fuck just happened. But we do the survey as quickly as possible and just nope the fuck out of there. I was thinking maybe it was a tweaker or something like that, but we were literally in the middle of nowhere. Also the dude was out of it when he was sitting there. Staring straight with zero emotion on his face. It was pretty fucking weird. A coworker says that he never had any experience like that in his life. I've also had some weird encounters with UFOs. Most of the time it was in the evening or at night when the sky was clear and we were coming back from a site. I'll share a cool one. Not really scary but pretty neat. Around 8 pm. Driving back from site. November, light snow on the ground but it hadn't started falling heavy until mid-December that year. Clear sky, stars are out. Super pretty. Two other guys including me, my boss and a trainee. The boss is driving. Talking about what we are going to do on Christmas break. How things are going, just kind of shooting the shit. Feels nice since my boss and I never really talked much about non-work related things. Boss reaches for his cigs, tells me to hold to wheel and keep her straight. Boss returns his hands to the wheel. Makes contact with the wheel. Zap. He was shocked. Think of static shock but times 5. Okay, that was fucking weird. Feel a strange pressure. Kind of like something is off. The trainee in the back says he doesn't feel well. Look behind us. Weird objects tailing us and coming up on us fast. Probably a couple hundred feet above the road. Boss sees it. WT thing together. The thing is literally zooming. One second later it passes over the car. Realize we can't hear anything. WT thing again. Watch the object follow the road at speeds no airplanes can travel at until it stops. Sits there idle for a few seconds. Boss slows down the car to watch it. The thing is probably half a mile away. 
shoot straight up into the night sky. Gone in seconds. We got back and weren't really scared, just more interested in what it was. My boss said that he has seen something like that before, but by far that was the most time he's gotten eyes on the thing. We had a visual for at least 30 seconds. It was pretty fucking cool actually. Alright I have one as well. Not going to green text this though. Southwest Michigan area. Myself and a group of friends would play paintball about every weekend during my high school years. We had permission to use this huge plot of land that was split by railroad tracks. So we would set up and play pretty much all day. When the sun started to go down the woods really took on an entirely different vibe. Just so much tension and you could just feel so much pressure. Really no other way to describe it. So as a group we decided we would just end our games before it got dark. Fast forward a few years. Group of friends. Different groups mind you. Are all getting into occult shit and experimenting with spirits. Well one of them brings up the land I would play paintball on. Claiming it had some serious bad juju. So being the guy who knew the area I offered to take them out. We get out to the woods around evening time. The vibe is the same as always really tense. Make our way to the old building that sits by the tracks. Everyone gets settled in and a few of them go off into the woods to find spooky shit. I stay back and just chill at the building. Making small talk and whatnot with the others we wait for our friends to return. I think it was probably a good 20-something minutes pass and we hear yelling and the distinct sound of a handgun firing. We all jump up, not really sure what to do as our friends come rushing out of the woods. No time for talking we all just book it to the cars and leave ASAP. We get a few miles away and stop and hear their story. Apparently one friend with his dark vision goggles saw something that was more or less a smaller humanoid-like creature peering at them. When he alerted the other guy the creature bolted towards them and that's why they opened fire and ran. So after this account I'm not really sure. I've been coming out here so much and never had that happen. So I decided to head back there next weekend. So I head back to the spot. Get there at like 11 p.m. It's dark. It's spooky. I don't leave my car and I just sit by the entrance of the property. I roll down my window and try to talk to whatever it is that my friends have experienced. I just spoke out to the woods and called it out basically. I remember more or less taunting it and once I had my fill I drove off. By this time I lived a good hour away and was heading home. As I pull up and turn to the road I get perhaps 20 feet down when I get slammed with pain in my lower stomach. The feeling of like someone's hand just pulling my guts is the best way to describe this. My radio goes off. Dash lights go dim. Every window in my car goes frosty. I drove for a good half hour and then everything stopped. All the lighting came back on. The radio returned. The pain in my gut stopped. I was relieved as fuck to say the least. I make it home and I feel much better. My grandma is a night owl so she's up in the kitchen making tea or something. I sat at the table and chatted with her. A few minutes go by and I feel that tension from the woods again. I'm playing it cool in front of grandma and continue to chat. This next part still has me fucked to this day. So grandma is in the kitchen behind her as a glass door leading to the garage. So as she is going about her kitchen stuff she moves out of the way of this door. In the door is standing a tall, red, dark brownish skin smiling, man, like being. The smile was ear to ear and was just this grin of pure malice. I about shit my pants. He vanished as quickly as he appeared however and was gone when she turned back. 
I excuse myself and head to bed. I spent that night praying, doing protection rituals, really just whatever the fuck I could do because I was so scared. I still don't know what the hell all this was but I don't fuck with that land anymore. Haven't had another experience with said smiling man either. Another quick story from when we were surveying an area on the outskirts of Torch Lake. Surveying doing our normal shit. I feel like I'm being watched. Field buddy also feels it. Finish our shit at head back to the truck. Get there and start her up. Check mirrors. Fucking dude standing at the edge of the woods with a hunting rifle and a handgun to his hip. Waves us off as we are leaving. Report to the police. Next day we had to go back out there. The police wouldn't go with us so some Department of Natural Resources tagged along thinking he might have been hunting out of season. Get back to the original spot. About an hour in and we feel as if we are being watched again. Department of Natural Resources guys are just chatting a few yards away. We hear some crunching to our right a long ways away. Department of Natural Resources guys go check it out. Gunshot. WTF. One Department of Natural Resources guy runs back to the truck, tells us to come with. Apparently, this dude was crazy. He had been scoping us out every time we went in that area to survey and was so sure that it was his property even when it wasn't. It was state land. Here is the kicker. The dude lived out there in a tent and therefore claimed the property. When the Department of Natural Resources tried to confront them he pulled a gun so the Department of Natural Resources officer shot him near the hip area. Anyways, police arrived and took him away. Didn't really know the full story until a year later when someone at work told me about it. Obligatory youper here. I've never had anything too wild happen to me. But I've had friends tell me really weird shit and I've talked to old timers about the old legends if anyone would be interested. I've spent a lot of time roughing it in the deep woods around the Porcupine Mountains and Big Eric's Bridge, and I've seen slash heard shit that scared the hell out of me. Meet a hot girl and take her camping near Big Eric's. She's hot, says she's outdoorsy. All too easy. JPEG. Drive like two hours to get there. Find a secluded spot away from the actual campground, maybe three miles farther down and close to the Huron River. Nice little clearing, can hear the river rapids, kind of romantic. Date going well, things get dark and we build a fire waiting for nightfall. Move into the tent, things continue to go well. Few hours later she needs to take a piss. She wakes me up to leave the tent. A few moments pass, I'm in the near sleep haze. She screams. I jumped out of our sleeping bag, stark naked. Her flashlight is darting around the trees that edge the clearing, nothing but eyes are beaming back at us. I mean it's not unusual to see wildlife at night around here, but usually it's just a fucking squirrel or single deer to stun to run away. This was seriously a few dozen animals all watching us. They didn't move either. Even the bears around here get spooked by loud noise, and they don't travel in packs that large. Eyes are in all sorts of places, a few yards up in trees, brush, all around us. She jumps back into the tent. Spend the rest of the night with this girl in one arm and my knife in the other. Morning comes, no sleep. Immediately pack up and go home. She didn't speak to me again after that. I keep trying to think about what it could have been but nothing around here keeps in groups that large and doesn't run when they see people. I don't camp up there anymore without at least my rifle. My friend used to live in Oscoda. Would go camping all the time just up on the beach coast surrounded by woods. He and his friend are out camping one night and get hit by a storm. Stay in the tent as it's pouring rain and try to sleep through it. He wakes up suddenly to a very loud sound, like something was banging or whacking something very large against a tree. Goes on for like an hour. He wakes his friend to tell him. He's already awake and has been listening to it as well. At some point the waking stops and hears something being dragged on the ground. Tries to peek outside at one point but it's too dark. 
Another story he told me after was about how he used to go to this abandoned army base near him, can't remember what it was called and why he was going there, possibly to camp slash chill, and was in his truck one night out on the outskirts of the base with another friend when suddenly out of the woods by them they could hear something very large moving, they knew it had to be large because they could hear the snapping of thick branches. When he looked in his rear view mirror he saw behind them the very trees moving like something huge was passing through and very fast. He believes it was Bigfoot in both accounts and I think that could be a good theory. I had my own experience up in Oscoda too so I definitely think there's something up there. So, I live in Kalamazoo, and I'm bored to death. Tried a few times, with no luck. I want to talk with people who have actual real nopes slash spooks slash stories that take place in Michigan. I want to believe that some crazy shit happens here to make what I myself have seen seem more believable and less like I'm insane. Any help? I'll start off sharing one. I used to live in this shit town called Redford, which is pretty much like Detroit's less tainted extremity. Close by was the city of Northville, which had this amazing completely abandoned Silent Hill style asylum. Like 12 stories, tall, open roof, everything. Anyway, green text time. Go to the hospital one night. Be chilling across the street with a friend in the car. Attain balls. Leave the car, go to the entrance, they put a gate to block cars at the driveway. Good 200 feet to the building, start walking. Suddenly, headlights, in front of us. Turn and run. Car catches up with us at the gate, assuming it's cops. A girl that looks about 23 gets out. Where are you guys back there? No. Just walking. Good, they don't like it when you go back there. They who? The people who remain back there. She goes to the gate, slides a keycard in the electric lock, and gets in the car as the gate opens. She leaves. We run back to our car. WTF for a few minutes. This girl's car was unmarked and had black tinted windows. We saw a really nice interior when the door was open, police-style computer on a swivel mount, that type of thing. Ten minutes later, two identical cars show up. Girl gets out of one, an older man in a suit from the other, with a young boy next to him. Talk for a second, we can't hear. Open gate, drive through. We Google Maps the thing and there is nothing back there but an obscure thin trail that leads to a community college. No one lives there. WTF did we just see? Gladwin friend reporting in. Pretty much rural woodland and Amish people out here. B-17. Four-wheelers with old friend in the fire trails. Sun went down while fishing with friend, we'll call him Greg. Greg and I get on my four-wheeler, darkness fell quick and big ass mosquitoes swarm us when we stop. Around four miles out into a dirt road, nothing but trees for miles on both sides. ATV quickly sputters to a stop, out of gas. Feel dumb and push ATV into ditch along with fishing stuff, we'll come back for it. Walking in pitch darkness when everything goes silent. All ambient bug noises just halt completely. All I can hear is my heartbeat thundering and a persistent ringing in my ears. Far out to our left we hear what sounds like a mix of tires squealing on pavement and thick metal being twisted, followed by a sharp crack that echoed. Oh fuck no thank you. We dive into the ditch, hearts racing. What the fuck was that, Anon? We lay in the brush for a few minutes that felt like hours. The noise comes again, much closer and louder, the deafening crack only yards away from the tree line. Fucking run. We bolt like madmen, screaming and freaking the fuck out. Pretty much run all the way back to my uncle's house. Went back the next day. The gravel on the road was rustled badly like there was a struggle in front of where we left our shit. Grandpa always told me to not be out in the woods at night. Any Michigan friends here? Looking for somewhere spooky to visit or any Michigan-related stories blah blah. I got a crappy nope for ya. Be me. Wanna go catfishing, so hit up a nearby river. 
Be about 11 p.m., get to the park, drag my shit to the river. Been fishing for about an hour, a couple bites, whatever. Notice the tapping sound, like someone hitting a stick on a tree trunk. Tap tap tap, tap tap tap. Continue fishing, I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Stop hearing the noise, for a bit. Starts up after about 10 minutes. Got my interest now. Grab a flashlight, shine it towards the sound. Don't see nothing, whatever got fishing to do. Keep fishing, sound comes and goes. Always in the same spot. Never see nothing, the fuck. Start tripping out, maybe some rednecks fucking with me. Definitely, scared of rednecks. Woodpeckers don't peck wood at night. Walk towards sound, can't see nothing, sound stops. Nope the fuck out grab my shit and run to my car like a scared city boy. I heard Bigfoot does shit like that, never heard of any sightings in southeast Michigan. I've heard other spooky sounds in the park, never see shit though. Used to live out in the country, so a lot of weird shit. Many stories. Still live in Michigan too. Be me. Live on dirt road. Be night. Moon is bright. Be ghost hunting with a friend, we were teens. Have walkie talkies. Clicking talk button makes static on the other end. Use system of clicks to identify danger level. One click equals something weird. Rest are bad. Friend is walking through the yard while I'm on the road. Get near the end of my property. See an orange figure with oval like appendages, arms, torso, head. No defining features more like orange gas. Click that motherfucking button dot avi. Got a few more short ones. Yes, we do have a town called hell, it freezes over every year. More. Same house. Over at a friend's house just down the road. It's like 2 a.m. or something. Friend is passed out on computer. Mom is sleeping on the couch opposite side of the room. I'm on the other couch. TV is on. Casting an L-shaped shadow, shadow extends into hallway. Part of the wall that is illuminated I see the shadow of a man, head to shoulders, look at me then turn towards the hallway and go into the dark. Freak the fuck out and pull blankets overhead. Next day. Tell friend and his hear it. So you've seen him now too. All my what's dot WTF. More more. Still same house. Friend is over at my place this time. Trying to sleep. Door is open. Lamp out in hallway. Dog moves its head towards lamp really fast. We look at it too. I see a pale, shirtless boy standing under the light. Gone in split second. Officially spooked. Three friends and I are sitting outside on the outskirts of a little town called Bangor. Way out in the sticks and the nearest neighbor was about half mile or so away. We're outside sitting in the dark talking teenage bullshit. Our only light is coming from a bedroom window and our backs are to the window. Someone was talking and a shadow passed. It was like someone walked past the window, but the person was inside. Instantly all of us turned to look at the window, but no one was in the room. Two of us darted into the room and the other two ran around the house to the front door. From the room we ran upstairs and met the other two who were talking to my friend's dad. He was nonchalantly sitting in his chair and knowing him he hadn't moved since the last time he either shit or ate. No one else was in the house. I don't know what it was, but if his dad did it to scare us I'm sure he would have been out of breath. He was a very big guy and I could never see him running up a flight of stairs and not being winded. It's unexplainable as far as I'm concerned. I miss those guys. Be grandfather. Working on his farm a few miles outside of Cadillac. Dogs start going off. Barking angrily and facing the timber. Grandfather looks towards the timber to see what has them so riled up. Sees what he thought at first was a black bear just past the tree line. Looks harder, sees that it's more brown in color than black, and that its face doesn't really look like a bear's. 
Whatever it is starts walking the tree line, but still facing grandfather and the dogs. Bear thing is headed toward the horse pasture. Grandfather goes inside and grabs his rifle, not sure what kind. Comes back outside, the thing is still behind the tree line, and fires a warning shot past it to scare it away from the horse pasture. Motherfucker stands up on its hind legs, and that's when grandpappy sees shit ain't no bear. Has a much skinnier build than a bear, and there is a very visible tail hanging down. Thing is about 30 yards away, so grandfather didn't know the exact height, but he guessed the thing stood about six and a half feet tall. Thing stares at him for what seems like an eternity, then drops back down on all fours and bolts off into the woods. The way it ran and its speed convinced grandfather that what he saw was no bear. Few days later, grandfather was getting ready for bed. Right as he was getting ready to lay down, he heard a commotion coming from the direction of the horse pasture. Horses whinnying, something snarling. Grandfather throws on his boots, grabs his rifle, and runs out to the pasture. When he gets there all of the horses are huddled under the shelter at the edge of the field. Grandfather notices that one of the colts is missing. He looks around the pasture, but can't find it anywhere. Ends up going back to the house after a while. Goes out again in the morning to look for the colt. Never finds a trace, even in the daylight. About a week later one last thing happened. Late in the evening again. Grandfather is washing dishes in the kitchen. Suddenly there's a loud sound coming from right outside the cabin. It sounded like no animal he had ever heard in his life. Grandfather described it as sounding like a coyote yelp, but much deeper. Grabs the lantern and opens the front door. Yelping stops as soon as he steps outside. Stands in the doorway for a bit, waiting to see if whatever it was starts up again. Nothing else happened, so he went back inside. Grandfather was sure the three events were all related. I wish I could ask him about it in more detail but he passed away back in 2007. Hey. Uh. Michigan friend here. I only have two stories, neither are first-hand accounts. The first is supposedly one of the founding legends, 1800s. It is both straightforward and easily exaggerated hearsay. We have a group of loggers who, after a long day, settle around a fire. As with all good scary stories, they came to find themselves feeling watched. Apparently, someone or something was watching them from the tree line. Being big, burly loggers, they decided to ignore it, until the loudest, closest howl any of them had ever heard poured into the campsite, anyway. A person was worth ignoring, wolves, however, were not. So they quickly made their way into their cabins. The most basic description I have is a single-room longhouse lined with bunk beds. The door was tall to accommodate axes over shoulders and other things, so it was about seven feet tall, with a small window about six feet up. The loggers, now in the cabin, began to discuss the oddity of having wolves so close to the camp, when they heard the howl again. This time it was right outside the cabin, none of them having a gun at the time, they decided it was best to block the door and wait until sunrise to try and chase the wolves off. This is when they hear some guttural gibberish, something close to words, but not quite. Sounds made their way around the cabin until they reached the door when, in the window, they could see the face of a very large dog looking in. I cannot give specifics on the breed, but we can imagine it was very mean looking. Given the period, a few loggers ran through some cheap prayers and the hound retreated. In the morning, they can find no sign of wolves, other than some very large paw prints, walking around the cabin. The legendary part. The prints appeared to be bipedal. The second story is more modern, and from a friend of mine. Given the vagueness to some aspects of the story, I believe that it is in some part the truth. My friend is a longtime hunter and back when he was 16 or so, he would go deer hunting with his uncle every year. At the time of the story, they were hunting a bit further north in the lower peninsula than they were used to, just a few hours northeast of Traverse City. 
My friend was situated up in a tree stand facing north, with his uncle about 50 yards south and facing east. Taking advantage of budding technology of texting at the time, the two would send silent messages of anything they spotted to each other. A few hours to sunset, my friend got a text from his uncle that said, There's something under your tree stand. My friend could not see directly below him without causing a racket, so he simply asked, Dear? No, looks like a young bear, maybe. You see the mom? No, hold on it's standing up. Probably a bear. Hold on. Now, my friend decided to stay still. His uncle approached and he heard something scurry off to his left, so when he looked down, he tells me he saw something like a dog run into the brush until he lost sight of it. His uncle called him down and quietly told him that it was trying to climb the tree stand. So he approached and pulled out his handgun. Now, my friend immediately suggested that it was just a bear, but the uncle insisted that was not a bear, because it tried to climb the stand, and not the tree. Making matters worse, it only ran off when he finally pointed the gun at the animal. Michigan Blue Hell has anyone ever heard of this? Saw it mentioned on here a few days ago on one of those threads referencing the iceberg image with all the conspiracies. It's supposed to be about some kind of vacuum created in Michigan at almost erased existence if I remember correctly. I found it interesting and wondered if anyone else knew much about it since Google returns no results for it. Blue Hell is based on ancient Native American myths specifically the Ojibwe tribes, Chippewa. God sent them a messenger, teacher as a gift, a hare called Nanabajo. Long story short, Nanabajo outsmarted and tricked the great serpent, Cthulhu and trapped him in the depths of the Great Lakes somewhere, Michigan assumed since the tribes occupied that area. Ojibwe tribes have the oldest shamanic initiation rituals of any culture ever discovered in the world, and they are still in use today. To attain the highest level takes a minimum of 30 years supposedly, no one will ever know because after the first two levels all rituals are performed in the spirit realm. No shit these dudes are hardcore. They trip balls on a very specific mushroom that is deadly poisonous unless picked during a particular moon phase. They have survived and kept record of all biblical disasters, and along with the Hopi, Navajo have already been prophesied to survive the end days. Rifle River is pretty sweet, have fun and remember that a clan of Sasquatch range from their west to Harrison, as far north as St. Helen and as far south as Sanford. Sightings are extremely rare and they're reportedly not aggressive to humans due to the relative abundance of food sources in the area, though they've been known to stalk and steal kills from deer hunters in late fall. Can confirm, live near there and hunt often. Not uncommon to find trees broken off like a pencil, but four inches in diameter and in heavy forest where the wind would not do it. Be friend of mine, an old boomer. Hunting in tree stand. See a scrawny but large black bear coming to bait pile. Kinda geeked up cause bears are rare here. Bow hunting so can't scope it. After a minute it stands up. Bears do this, even more exciting because it's more rare to see. Suddenly it sprints off. Got really uneasy and noped out because it did not look right at all. Maybe a bear, I dunno. Personally, I have heard things moving that did not sound normal. Made weird vocalizations, like a cat yowling, but more stressed and deeper. Can't really describe it. When moving it sounded big, but not four-legged, if you hunt or have been around enough animals you know two legs versus four sound completely different. I track all of my deer down, I have only lost one and I am baffled. I shot her in the neck, she went down like a sack of potatoes. I sat and watched, no movement. Probably only 50 yards out. Oak forest. If she ran I would have seen her. Got out of my blind, 
and to do so I lost sight for a minute because the door was facing opposite her. All I found was a puddle of blood, no spore anywhere. No hoof prints, nothing. She could have ran away, ick. Came back with a couple buddies later after I searched alone till dark. Never found her. B me, 17. B with friend, Miles, 18. B massive friends who like to travel together. He drives himself, our friend Dean, 16, and I to the Upper Peninsula. We visited lots of places, Lance, Houghton, and a lot of places on the Keweenaw Peninsula. Go camping in the woods a few miles north of Houghton. Really hilly and heavily forested. Set up camp, eat lunch and go hiking. This one only two years back, so I can remember the next experience very well. We come across this weird wooden structure, in an end shape. While I didn't realize it then, we followed a path of them into a cave, which I then realized to my disbelief that we were in an abandoned mine. We pull out flashlight and keep traveling further. We hear the occasional crow caw, crickets, etc. We then immediately hear a weird ass scream. Miles is a pussy. Dude I know you follow this board a lot but if you are reading this you are a massive coward. This guy starts running immediately. Trips and falls on loose lead chunks. Starts fucking crying. Dean is uncomfortable but helps Miles up. While he is helping him up, I am looking forward in pure fucking terror. Shit my fucking pants dot smell vision The screaming keeps fucking going and I could see a light down the tunnel. Get Miles to be quiet and silently walk down the tunnel with my .22 revolver from my granduncle who was a World War II vet. Keep making our way forward. After about 5 minutes of walking quietly, the screaming stops. We walk even quieter than before. Come to AT, where the left turn is where the light is coming from. Light is flashing violently. Dean starts shaking noticeably. He has to vomit in his hoodie so it wouldn't make much noise. As soon as he stops vomiting, the light shuts off. I have the bravery to look around the corner. No movement, and the depth of the left tunnel is only about 7 feet. Fuck it. Turn on flashlight. No one is there. Start investigating. Everyone turns on flashlights. See a wall collapsed shortened the tunnel to the length it was now. Minor helmet with light was laying on the floor. Lift it to reveal a skull. Almost shit myself, but look around. Find the rest of the body crushed in the tunnel collapse. I silently pay my respects hoping that it would keep the poor soul's spirit from following me, but also out of genuine respect for the miner and his family. We leave. When turning around to leave, I see the right tunnel on the T. Really long, from what I can see. Get back to camp. Start talking about the experience. Miles is a tough guy generally, so we ask him about why he started crying. I saw some guy, maybe 20 feet away dash. Dean immediately interrupts. Long, drooping jaw. No, eyes. Miles starts sobbing now. Dean explains that that is why he started vomiting, because he saw it behind us when we were creeping towards the T-bend. I didn't see the guy, but both my friends did. Thank God. We left the camping site the next day, instead of staying for a week. Anyone else have weird experiences from the Upper Peninsula? Pick is roughly where we were camping. Be me. Go camping with family often in the middle of the woods at a private association. Mom and I find a seemingly abandoned cabin back in the middle of the woods down a dirt road. Cabin looks fucked to hell and scratched all over, like siding nearly ripped off. Scratches probably quarter inch deep into siding. Siding made of wood too, not plastic, like vertical shingles. We don't stay long after passing by, it's getting dark soon and we want to get some food going. Years go by, and we make it a normal thing to go check out the cabin every time we go camping. 
cabin goes through cycles of being totally fucked up and repaired to pristine condition. Clearly someone owns the thing, but it's always heavily boarded up despite the repairs. One particular time we decided to take a closer look at the property just for fun. Cabin once again has been fully repaired and looks pretty normal. Search around a bit and find some debris left behind when the did repairs in the brush. On top of a pile of brush and planks we find the old door and the entire doorframe, ripped out and busted to hell. For some context, the door was incredibly heavy, like 150 to 200 pounds. Pretty sure the door was solid oak, with thin steel sheeting surrounding the exterior. Door was completely fucked, literally caved in the middle like someone had used a medieval battering ram. Splinters protruded the back side which is how I knew it was wood under the sheet metal. Doorknob looked like it had been crushed in a hydraulic press and then dimpled like a golf ball. Don't remember counting, but door had a ridiculous amount of hinges, like six or eight, and multiple deadbolts that were all bent to fuck or missing from the door entirely. After admiring the damage I look around a bit more and find an outhouse behind the cabin. Outhouse is scratched to fuck and looks 20 years older than the cabin. Outhouse stands maybe 9 feet high, and the door 7 feet. Top left corner of the door is chewed or scratched off. Can't open the outhouse as it is tightly screwed shut. Don't think too much about it since mom and I have seen the cabin torn up much worse before, so we take note and then walk back to camp looking for mushrooms and shit along the way. I'll also say one more thing that happened involving this cabin that is actually kinda funny. One time my mom and I wanted a peek inside, but everything was boarded and bolted up tight, so I ripped off the boards on one of the windows. We couldn't see much inside as it was dark and dingy, and the window was dirty as hell. We did see one thing though. Pinned to a support post not far away was an old Polaroid picture of a couple dudes. One smiling at the camera, and the other bending over with his pants down showing his bare ass. The cabin should be somewhere in the circled area just off the side of 11 mile road. Be me. Live in shitty rural part of Michigan, only benefit is living half hour out from the Great Lakes. Love to fish, invite buddy to fish with me out on Lake Michigan. Get on our shitty little fishing boat and head out. Calm waters, no riptide and sunny skies. No catch all day, fucking wasted day. Suddenly my friend gets a bite, it's heavy. Friend is straining hard, something really big is on the line. Rod. Fucking. Snaps. What the hell man, friend says, looking at his newly destroyed rod. Loud, splashing, about 50 feet out from us. Moment of stillness. Suddenly, the boat violently rocks. Waters are still calm and weather is still good. WTF is happening. JPG. Boat violently rocks again, we're freaked out. What the fuck, man? The waters still calm, friend says. I have no clue. Go to rev up engine to leave. Looking over boat, and I see something shiny underwater. Something hits the boat hard and sends me over. Plunged into the water. Everything becomes quiet and dark. As I open my eyes and they adjust I see what was shining underwater. Massive. Fucking. Scales. Attached to a massive serpentine body. Thing is right in front of my face. Try to find one end of the creature but it disappears into darkness. The thing turns around into view, and I shit bricks. Body tapers into a thin head, and it has huge milky white eyes. Massive fucking fleshy horns. The goddamn teeth. Very crooked and sticking out of the mouth. Long, sharp and needle-like teeth. It's slithering towards me like a snake. I start desperately making my way to the surface, the creature is speeding towards me. As I break the surface friend yanks me back onto boat. Whatever that thing was breaks the surface. Fucking huge. 
looks like a slimy scaly tree trunk with long sharp spines. Thing's body slithers above surface for at least five seconds. We start the engine and get the fuck out. Whatever that thing was kept hitting the boat until we got back near shore. The Michigan gnome has been folklore passed down from generation to generation within the southeastern parts of Michigan. There have been reported sightings even up to today. The Michigan gnome is a humanoid cryptid, reported to be about three to five feet tall, giving the feel of a human. They have been seen at either dawn or dusk. Reports have had similar behavior in common, being the gnome stands still and pretends not to be there at all. There have been no reports that hint at the gnome being aggressive. It is unknown what their diet consists of. There have been sightings of adolescents and adults. The Michigan gnome is generally found in southeastern parts of Michigan, but there have been some reports scattered across other areas. There have been reports in nature reserves that are even located in rather urban areas. The Michigan Dogman is a werewolf or werewolf-type creature first reported in 1887 in Wexford County, Michigan. Sightings have been reported in several locations throughout Michigan, primarily in the northwestern quadrant of the Lower Peninsula. In 1987, the legend of the Michigan Dogman gained popularity when a disc jockey at WTCM-FM recorded a song about the creature and its reported sightings. Cook recorded the song with a keyboard backing and credited it to Bob Farley. After he played the song, Cook received calls from listeners who said that they had encountered a similar creature. In the weeks after Cook first played the song, it was the most requested song on the station. He also sold cassettes of the songs for $4, and donated proceeds from the single to an animal shelter. Over the years, Cook has received more than 100 reports of the creature's existence. Cook later added verses to the song in 1997 after hearing a report of an animal break-in by an unknown canine at a cabin in Luther, Michigan. He re-recorded it again in 2007, with a mandolin backing. The first known sighting of the Michigan Dogman occurred in 1887 in Wexford County, when two lumberjacks saw a creature whom they described as having a man's body and a dog's head. In 1938 in Paris, Michigan, Robert Fortney was attacked by five wild dogs and said that one of the five walked on two legs. Reports of similar creatures also came from Allegan County in the 1950s, and in Manistee and Cross Village in 1967. Linda S. Godfrey, in her book The Beast of Bray Road, compares the Manistee sightings to a similar creature sighted in Wisconsin known as the Beast of Bray Road. In 1961, a night watchman was patrolling a manufacturing plant in Big Rapids, Michigan when he saw a peculiar figure. At first he thought it was a person until he saw the dog-like features. He pulled his gun and was about to shoot when he remembered his camera and took it out and took a picture of the horrific beast. The photos have not been analyzed yet and the photo still remains an unsolved mystery. Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. When I was very young, from the ages of 5 through 12, my two brothers, one a year older, and the other two years younger than me, and I would play in the woods our neighborhood was built in the middle of. There was a lot of scary shit out there in those woods. I never put all of the pieces together into one larger picture until a couple of months ago while talking to my sister about the story that has maps and boxes in it. She's seven years younger than me, so she wasn't along for most of this stuff. For the record, as the title says, we live in southeast Michigan. I've got a pack of smokes and a pot of coffee and nothing better to do right now, so if anyone is reading, I guess it's time to remember some stuff pick hopefully unrelated. I've repressed a lot. When we were little, my brothers and I, along with a number of neighborhood children, were obsessed with the woods. We did all of those awesome little boy things, like making maps and building forts and climbing trees. For the first couple of years, there were only a few houses in the neighborhood. The three of us mostly just played together, we were inseparable back then. The first time things got weird, we found an old pickup truck crashed against a tree deep in the woods. Our township is pretty old, and the place where our neighborhood resides had at one point been a major dumping ground and a couple of local businesses, I think it was back in the 20s or 30s or so, from what I recall. The truck itself had a lot of things in it, including some suspicious fibers like decayed clothing and a terrible odor. We told our dad, and he went out the next day. 
We weren't allowed in that part of the woods anymore, and yet we went all the time anyways. A little while later, a buddy down the street and I started exploring downriver from there. We found, over the next several months, dozens of boxes, all of them containing mundane items. One of them had a crap load of old penthouse magazines in it. We said we'd come back later with flashlights and get them. When we came back, they were gone. Now, that sounds mundane, but it becomes relevant later. Now, there was some strange wildlife in this area. I always thought I was crazy, but it turns out that yes, there are wild peacocks running about in my old neighborhood. I have no idea how that happened. But those aren't the creatures I dream about all these years later. No, that would be the dogs. We had a pack of wild dogs running about, big muscular wild dogs that couldn't be caught. They had a leader, an alpha if you will, who was bigger and meaner looking than the rest. He was solid white with red eyes, which I now know means he was albino in all likelihood. They would watch us play, and when we noticed, we would climb trees and wait till they lost interest to go kill a raccoon or something. Then one day, there was another kind of animal down there watching us in the tree with them. A dirty old man with a big, scraggly beard and jet black hair. He would be sighted about the neighborhood, but the cops couldn't or wouldn't do anything about it. My dad chased him off of our lawn with his 22 a couple of times. There was a park at the end of our neighborhood. Nothing special, just a fake beach with a couple of benches and a swing set. It was where the river bent around and hit another subdivision's backside. We would spend all summer fishing on that strip of gravelly sand every year. The woods had a trail in them that led to that other neighborhood, and sometimes we went down it for kicks. There were a lot of old, weird structures built off the trail, like sheds made of packing pallets and hundred-year-old tree forts. We were young adventure lads, so we were constantly snooping. God, I have no idea how we weren't all murdered by the end of things. I remember one time, my older brother decided he'd go for a swim a little up the river from where I was fishing. He got down to his underwear and just jumped in. A few minutes later, he's shouting and I'm running for him. He's hurriedly dressing. I look out, there was a little island-like spot in the middle of that part of the river covered in cattails, and standing amid them was some guy. I could only see the beard, but like I said, things begin to come together when you reflect years later. So now we hit the part where I describe myself a little bit. I'm of average build, haven't ever been terribly handsome, and have had sleeping problems my whole life. I would sneak out of the house a lot late at night and go for little strolls around the neighborhood and the woods surrounding them. Which is funny, because I'm terrified of open blinds after dark. I'm not afraid of the dark, just windows people can stare at me through. That's exactly what happened one night. My bedroom was on the second floor of the house, next to my little brother's. I had forgotten to close the blinds before dusk one night, and got up to shut them. I had a habit of looking down when I had to do that out of paranoia. This time, the blinds got stuck. When I looked up to fix them, there he was with his window against the glass. The man with the beard. I screamed, and my dad came running and my mom called the cops. My little brother woke up, because he stomped off across the roof and jumped. It was a rainy day and my yard tended to turn to soup due to septic issues. So when my dad found the splatter from him landing and his footprints, he was convinced. I didn't go outside at night for years after that. I guess I bring up my looks because I looked a lot worse when I was younger. I sometimes wonder why this guy had such an interest in us, but like I said, things get a lot clearer with time. He was clearly some kind of Minecraft file or something, and probably homeless. I have always had this recurring dream of me running through the woods naked with those dogs, which, believe it or not, is also an actual memory. I woke up to that a couple of times. See my first post. Shit gets a little weird and fuzzy for me around this period, which was when I was something like 8. I had a sleepwalking issue. I still do, so, had, is the wrong word. 
I would wake up naked and covered in mud all the time. It got so bad my parents started deadbolting my door and windows. Now, I also understand it was because of that guy. All of our rooms were similar and my parents got a motion sensor to monitor me and my sleepwalking problem. One night, I woke up in the woods being carried. We weren't far, I could see my neighbor's house. I screamed like I've never screamed in my entire life and it startled him. He dropped me. I'd probably be dead if not for that. I started sharing a bedroom with my little brother, and my older brother was moved upstairs into my old room. Now, at this point, the cops were always at our house and always in our neighborhood. We lived in a quiet suburb during the early 90s, so this sort of thing was largely unheard of around our area. It was big news around town. So one day, my brothers and I are clearing weds to build a structure back in a different part of the woods. We all had, favored weapons, that we'd found and claimed were for defense, but we really only used them to whack weeds out of our way. The dogs and us were on friendly terms by then. My little brother is whacking weeds next to me with his weapon of choice. A 2x4 with a bunch of nails in one end he found in a drainage ditch, when he suddenly goes stiff and pale. I ask what's wrong, and he just snaps at me to not move. My little brother's an engineer now and he's absurdly good at everything he does. He holds his board up by my face suddenly, and there's a loud bang. I'm confused. He turns it around and there's a bullet in it. He points, and they're off in the distance a guy is running away. I ask where our brother is, and he laughs and points. He's running across the field after the guy screaming, a pitchfork in his hand. We lost sight of the dude a neighborhood over. Now, my little sister was very young at this point. My parents watched her like hawks, because weird shit was starting to go down when she was an infant. One night, my dad just goes running past my bedroom in his underwear, baseball bat in hand, and goes charging out the front door. It's one of the only times I've ever heard him swearing. From what my mom says, the guy was peeking through the slightly cracked blinds at my sleeping baby sister. I never let her go anywhere out of my sight when she got old enough to play with us, and I only told her about some of this stuff very recently. Now that neighborhood buddy from earlier and I, we got bold. We went where we'd seen the boxes again even though we weren't supposed to. There was this weird dirt path off by the dirt road on that end of the neighborhood, that went nowhere. We looked around and eventually found a steel drum with stuff from a fire made of clothing and toys surrounded by mattresses. We were kind of freaked at first. Then we saw the boxes. Now, I know they were the same boxes because I looked inside. I recognized the magazines. We came back later that night. Now, when we returned we did so with flashlights and backpacks and little fishing utility knives. We weren't very smart. We approached with our flashlights off, as we could see the fire burning, and hid behind some brush. There were a bunch of guys who all looked similarly disheveled in stereotypical hobo fashion. They were drinking and singing in some foreign language. I remember none of the words, or even anything close, so I'll likely never know what language they were using. We didn't stick around long. I got yelled at for being out that late, and rightly so. It was stupid of me. Now, I do believe paranormal things have happened around me, whether that's stupid or not. However, I believe this was just a case of some weird homeless men living in the woods or something. Were there weird little fetishes made of twigs all over the woods? Yes. Does that make me think they were some sort of cult? No. I just wanted to state that I think this was just creepy guys, nothing extra special. Flash forward a year or so. We decided to get a little bit wacky in our fortress design, because someone or a few people started wrecking them up. We dug a humongous pit in the ground, something like 10 by 8 feet that was a good 6 feet deep, and put a bunch of scrap wood supported by posts over it and a tarp, then buried it. We made this really cool hatch that we grew grass onto to hide it, and now we had a secret bunker. We had fun in that fort all summer long. One afternoon late in summer, 
Both of my brothers just want to play Super Nintendo, so I decide I'll go it alone just to put some new stuff I'd found in the fortress. I'm just down the street when I start hearing a loud thwacking noise over and over again. I decided to keep my distance and get out the toy binoculars I was going to stash back there. I was bringing tools and scraps of wood I'd found. I couldn't get a good look through the tree line. Then I heard a loud boom. I didn't go back there that day, but the next day, my brothers and I went to our fortress. Someone had cut a huge tree down right onto it, destroying it. We picked a new spot in the woods, because now we couldn't go back there as our parents had somehow found out. This was when I was 10 or so, and shortly before forts stopped being our thing. I grabbed up some old baloney from the trash to feed the dogs, and headed off into the woods. We had started building bike trails with jumps and ramps back by our latest fortress, which should have probably finished what the bearded man started and killed us all. God, we were such idiot children. Anyways, I went back to the bike trail to see what was up today, and my older brother was already there. He looked upset. I followed him back, because he wouldn't tell me what was up. When we got back there, there was stuff written in red paint all over the place on our stuff in the trees. I said something like, damn kids from the other neighborhood painting up our stuff. My older brother pointed out that there were flies all over the paint. It wasn't paint, it was blood. I didn't believe him until he walked with me up to where our fortress had been. One of the wild dogs was down in the pit, his throat slit. Now this is the summer where forts stopped being cool because of that last bit. We stopped going into the woods. We should have years earlier, but you know how dumb children can be, we felt like nothing could happen to us. We switched things up and went fishing in the park a lot more. A couple of houses were right across the river, and we only went in the early afternoon, so we felt pretty safe. We avoided the trails and that part where the river bends and that island was. My granny got even more concerned and begged our parents to find a way to move. They said they couldn't without significant financial help, which nobody could give. Besides, my father had built that house. I think the guy got smart, because we didn't see him for the rest of the summer and quickly forgot everything about all of the previous events. Like I said, idiot children. I was at the park fishing with my sister one afternoon, and as I looked down into my tackle box to change lures, she made a little yelp. I looked up, and she was hiding behind me. I asked her what had happened, like had she had a bug bite her or something, and she just shook her head. She didn't speak much when she was little for some reason. Now she talks so much it gets grating at times. I crouched down and saw she was crying, so I packed up our stuff and we headed home. She said she'd seen some guy in the tree line staring at me, and I decided I didn't want to go into the park anymore. I started being an indoors kind of boy, got into magic cards and D&D, and we'd all been reading comics and playing video games for forever anyways, so I guess we finally smarted up. No more adventures for a few years, and only a couple of sightings around our yard of Mr. Beardy Face. Flash forward a good eight years and only a few sightings, and we come to me getting into a lot of trouble. I had been doing drugs for a bit a couple of years prior, but had been clean for a good year at that point. I woke up one night from the dream about the dogs, which I hadn't had in years, and I was in the woods by the park. Thankfully, I was fully clothed and on my feet. I must have been sleepwalking again. I got my bearings for a bit and then I heard it, the laughing. Not just one voice, either. Muscle memory kicked in, I'd been down the trails in these woods a thousand times, and I was almost to the other neighborhood, where a good friend who had helped me get clean lived. She knew about the man in the woods, said she'd seen him although I can't t prove that one way or the other, and her back door was always open for me because I sleepwalked to her house all the time. I booked it. I looked back and there was the guy. He was chasing me. I ran straight through a bramble because I knew it would shave time off and delay him and got cut up by it, but he didn't follow, just screamed and got tangled up. 
The woods ended in a huge park with a soccer field in my pal's neighborhood, and when I got to that field I just screamed and ran across it with all of what I had left. There was a single street light opposite the park, and I stood in that circle of light as house's lights clicked on. I looked back and saw him standing in the tree line, and he tipped his hood up and just walked back into the woods. I didn't stick around even though an old lady was yelling at me to stop, and proceeded to have a mental breakdown at my buddy's house. Now, couple that last part about multiple voices laughing with the part about the weird campsite from earlier, and I think maybe they all just looked similar enough that it was never just one guy. Or maybe one had taken a particular interest, because the last time I saw him was the weirdest one. My parents had gotten divorced when I was in high school, and my dad had moved to Georgia, about 30 minutes west of Atlanta. I got sent to live with him after my complete mental breakdown. I know, I know, a 20-year-old guy still living with his folks and all that. I had trouble getting my life together. I moved into an apartment shortly after because I'd gotten my first really serious girlfriend. We lived in an apartment down the road from my dad's place, and I worked at an Arby's on the other end of town. I didn't have a car, but I like walking anyways, so I just walked to and from work all the time. Our apartment complex was the only building on our street, which was three miles long. I always knew I was almost home when I saw the traffic light at the top of the hill, which was a mile uphill from our apartment. One night, I got to the top of the hill and felt relieved. It was one in the morning and I was tired. I started my second wind jog down the hill, and got a bad feeling. The streetlights on our road were almost a quarter of a mile apart, and I stopped under the first one so I could catch my breath and observe my surroundings. I looked back up the hill, as I often did, and saw the shadow of a man running down the hill. I decided not to figure out what that was all about, and booked it for home. A car swerved and almost hit me, because at that point I was trying to flag it down as it was the only car I'd seen. I looked back, hearing tires squeal. They almost hit the guy, and he was right under the light I'd been under. It was him. He gave me that same hood tip, and just sauntered into the swamp by the road. I ran home so fast and then I never saw him again. Frankly, I hope he's dead. I don't say stuff like that often, I like to believe there. As hope for everyone, but that guy followed me around for who knows how long and creeped on my brothers and sister too. They probably have stories all their own, but I never ask. I don't want to trigger flashbacks if they do. My sister lives with me, because I don't want him finding her alone. I've been back in Michigan for seven years. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. If you enjoyed tonight's story, then please subscribe to the channel as more green texts will appear daily. A new broadcast will appear when the clock strikes. Midnight Central Time.